Thank you. Let's keep it on Goldman. What does it all mean for the stock? Gerard Cassidy is here. He's head of U.S. Bank Equity Strategy at RBC Capital Markets. He's got a hold and a 370 price target. Gerard, it's great to see you again. Uh, what were your big takeaways from Investor Day today? And, and uh, uh, how important is David Solomon's future to resolving what the sh uh, company should be worth right now? Well, Kelly, thank you for having me on the show. And I would say one of the big takeaways that investors saw today was that over the last three years, this company has delivered incredible book value per share growth and dividend per share growth, much better than its peer group, and the shareholder returns have been better. They also pointed out that they, they are a preeminent global investment bank with incredible quality and brand recognition. That all being said, though, they do have the challenge of this consumer banking business, which you were just talking about with the prior um, uh, person on the, on the call here. And I think what you're going to see is that they are going to need to make some tough decisions about this consumer banking business because they don't expect it to be profitable until about 2025. And this is when their peers are all very profitable in this credit card business and other type of point of sale lending. So that's really the issue. It's unfortunate. It's taking away from what they have done really well. And this albatross is something that is around the neck of Goldman at this time. So so it, it seems in the, in the metrics you cited there, uh, some of them sort of better than the peer group uh, in, in return to shareholders and so forth. Those are important things. Is Goldman just not getting credit for the, for the things it's doing well as its st missteps in consumer banking have overshadowed them? I, I think that's part of it. And that's, that's a really good observation because I think you're right. There is maybe, you know, the, the distraction of the consumer banking business. But we also have to remember that this is a market dependent industry in which Goldman is one of the best in. And so that is not something that the markets pay up for in terms of high valuations, as, as we all know predictability of earnings is critical in achieving a high valuation. And because they're in a market-dependent business, of course, the capital markets, that makes their their earnings and returns more volatile year to year. As you saw last year, they were quite uh, low relative to 2021 when they were incredibly high. So that is one of the factors why I think the stock doesn't do as well as maybe a Morgan Stanley who has a more predictable earnings stream. So simply put, if you own the stock, what would you do with it today? If you didn't own the stock, what would you do? I think it really comes down very straightforwardly to what is your outlook for the market over the next 12 to 18 months. And if you think the market's going to go into a further correction, you want to be on the sidelines on a bank that is in that business. On the other hand, if you're positive on the market and bullish, you want to own this. This is a pure play on the capital markets. And finally, Gerard, what about uh, what Charlie Bobrinskoy said last hour, that he would buy it at one times tangible book and sell it at two? That, that, that buy low, sell high always works for most people. So I'm with you, Kelly. That, that's a pretty smart strategy. All right, Gerard Cassidy, a pleasure. Thanks so much today. You're welcome. All righty.